Welcome into the Paul Farrington Show. Paul joined alongside Jack Weinberger and Robert Ziggy Ziegler at the University of Virginia. Thanks for everyone who tuned in to watch this show. Producer Zach should hopefully be back later in this week. We are closing in very quickly, guys, on 10,000 subscribers. About probably by the time this video drops, 9.9, under 100, hopefully, to go. Ziggy, you had a, a pretty big video come out yesterday on uh, on April 1st. You have some explaining to do, though. What, what, the, what the hell's going on here? I mean, Paul, look, it's it's the classic April Fool's view driver, sub driver, <laughs> engagement driver video. Everyone knows that's what it was. Right. So, Carl, you can rest easy. You freaked out. Yes, this was April Fool's. It was. Um, I mean, I don't really know why so many people were suckered in by it. It's so obvious. So, so you are still you're still on, we're just confirming you are still on our side. Of course, I wouldn't become a Packers fan. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the reality. Did you the read bills. the comments, Jack? I mean, if 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 that. Vi- oh, I read I read most of them. The comments if, are so good. If that video was posted on any one of the other three hundred and sixty four days, it's much different. But <laughs> yeah, it always I, starts as a quote joke. Six months from now, it'll be real. That's from Shane Saunders. Denial is not a river in Egypt. <laughs> there's, there's a but the comment section is fantastic well, even, on that. Like it always is on our videos. Yeah, I watched like an hour after it was posted. I'm like, wait a minute, and then I realized today's <laughs> date. I got a text from Ziggy. So Ziggy, can you why don't you tell everybody how you got that shirt? Because I, I both you and I were furious at the story. Oh yeah, so it's you saw the big Packers poncho. So it was my birthday uh, about a week and a half ago. I got a lot of happy birthday wishes from you all, which I appreciated. But. uh My parents were in town visiting me for the birthday and they tell me they've got a birthday gift, but that I can't be mad. And it's like, why would I be mad? Right. You know, it's a gift. I'm appreciative. You know, of course, I'm not going to say anything. And I open it up. It's this giant Mexican (laughs) Green Bay Packers poncho, like unofficial, unlicensed, unofficial, all that stuff. And it's just I mean, you can see it in the video. It's one of the most heinous things I've ever seen. (laughs) What was your reaction to your parents when you first opened up the poncho? I said, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I know you guys were thinking about it. You sent me a picture of it, and I just wrote, no, all cap, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, was the, the, you know, the funny thing is, this this right now can be labeled as an April Fool's joke, but a bit down the road, you never <laughs> know. <laughs> you never, Carl, you never Carl's know. Carl's reaction was so good. Are you effing serious? It's better be April Fool's. <laughs> you did a great job. It, it was pretty convincing, Ziggy. You convinced me for like two minutes, and then I realized it was April. 4th. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, this is uh, Green Bay Packers fans can read into that what they want. But oh no, oh no, I don't like hearing that. A lot of people thought that there was some desperation in your voice, and maybe some uh, some yearning for it to be the truth. So hopefully, we can keep you around for a little bit longer here. <laughs> okay, so we got a fun show today. We'll end with the mailbag. I uh, got a bunch of questions. Thanks for everyone who submitted them. Talk a little bit about Drake May to the Vikings. That's a rumor that's been heating up. One that you know Ziggy found an inside source. We talked about that at the end of an episode a couple weeks ago. And then the Jets. You know, we really haven't talked much about the Jets since uh, since Andrew left the show like a year ago. But they're finally starting to make some moves, and their fan base can has some reason to be excited uh, with the moves that they're making along the lines here. But we'll start with a little JJ McCarthy talk. Nothing too crazy here, but. In the NFL draft season, smoke screens are, are all over the place. You never know who's telling the truth, who's lying. You know, Drake May's falling. Jaden Daniels, you see people concerned about his elbow all of a sudden out of nowhere. And it actually looks kind of disgusting. I don't know if that picture is... Yeah, but it's not a serious medical issue. Yeah, There's it's, no it's just nothing there. crazy. You know, Think back to last season. Remember Will Levis on draft day was all of a sudden going number two in the draft. And people were freaking out over that. You never know exactly what's going to be the truth. And this year, I think the most shocking ascension to me has been J.J. McCarthy, who is, mm-hmm. you know, in a lot of people's eyes, was closer to that Bo Nix, Michael Penix range as this process started. And all of a sudden now, we're talking about him potentially going up to number two in the draft, the commanders. And when you have these kind of prospects with who, who have hype and potential, you know, question marks like J.J. McCarthy is, usually it's guys like Anthony Richardson or Josh Allen, people who with unbelievable superhuman athletic traits but jj mccarthy when, when i look at him you know i see i do see a winner i do see someone who's very very well spoken and is very good in meetings and great teammate but i don't know if there's enough there for me to to say all right i'm willing to roll the dice on this guy in the top three is that are, are, the, are these rumors getting a little bit crazy so this is somebody who has kind of grown on me mm-hmm. recently 
I wasn't. A, I was always saying this guy's a very, very good college quarterback. I don't really see it in the NFL though. And as the weeks went on, as as the playoffs came around, and as as just the season came to an end, he grew on me week by week. Michigan, for the most part, didn't shoulder the load on JJ McCarthy, but when he was needed to step up and he was needed to be elite, he carried his weight and he looked very, very good. He lacks the physical build and some of the physical abilities of other quarterbacks. But what he is very good at, where he excels, is shorter, kind of intermediate type throws. Very accurate. He can lead guys in space. He's good in the pocket. He can also get out of the pocket. He has good escaping ability. Those are good traits that I that I like and can translate to the NFL successfully for him in my eyes. But number two. But that's the thing. He's not great. And if you watch from Michigan, he is not great at, at, at deeper throws down the field, outside the numbers. You know, when, when, when receivers beyond that 10 to 15 yard mark are covered, he's very good over the middle, shorter, intermediate. Yes. But I think to be talking about his number two right now, there's things that he lacks and he's only 21 years old. I think his ceiling is very high and he can improve. Of course, when he gets the NFL, he will improve. But number two in the draft right now seems pretty high for JJ McCarthy. I think he's top 15. But number two is a lot. Okay. You know, I was saying way earlier in the offseason, not even in the offseason, right, when the playoffs were starting, that pretty soon J.J. McCarthy had been seen high in NFL circles for a while, and we were just waiting for the NFL media to catch on with that. It's absolutely happened. And the reason for that, I think, is pretty straightforward, right? If you look at the things you want from a modern NFL quarterback, what can guys do? Here's what you really want. You want four traits. Sack avoidance turnover avoidance, a good arm, and mobility. J.J. McCarthy has at least three of those things. And given his age, there's reason to believe his arm's already decent. It's an NFL arm. But there's reason to believe it can develop even just a little bit more. So he has all of the traits you would want from a quarterback on paper. Now, of course, at Michigan, we didn't get a lot of opportunity to see that. Not because he's not very good, but because you have the best run blocking offensive line in the country, you got Blake Corum, you can just run the ball every single play. You know, I think back to that Penn State game, second half, where they just said, hey, JJ, you take the second half off. We're just going to run the ball <laughs> against one of the best defenses in the country. And they just did it. But, you know, on the other hand, there is a lot to be excited about with him. I don't think he's number two material. Um, honestly, I've been high on Drake May. I've been high on him for almost a year. You I continue to think that he's clearly number two and maybe even closer to number one than people think. But McCarthy, for me, pretty neatly slots in as the third best quarterback prospect. I firmly expect him to go early in the first round of the NFL draft. And while I think number two is a little bit too much hype, there's a lot to be excited about for him. And it's one of the best quarterbacks in the draft. I've got him right there. So you have him over Jaden Daniels. I am. I have a lot of concerns about Jaden Daniels. Is it both the elbow picture? No, it has nothing to do with the elbow. The elbow is legitimately not even a concern. I mean, the only thing, like I said, the only thing for me with J.J. McCarthy is is the strength of of his his arm. You know, it's uh, it's funny because I think right now Jaden Daniels is probably going to wind up going two overall, and you could just look at why 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 are you rolling no, your eyes at that? Because it's not true. He's not going number two overall. I don't. I feel like you bring in Cliff Kingsbury and you talk about guys who are most capable or or who fits into the air raid offense the best in most people's eyes. And the answer is Drake May. I, I feel like a lot of people. I, I want the guy who can uh, throw the ball in my air raid <laughs> offense. I don't know about you. Hey, if Brian Kelly maybe maybe let it slip the other day, you see that in an interview. Where he finished off saying, "Yeah, hey, you know, Jaden's gonna be great with the with Washington." No, yeah, no. because Washington's calling Brian Kelly to tell him. I think NFL that Drake May points. should go to the Commanders too. I'm just saying, Do you know, who's actually perfect for an air raid offense is JJ McCarthy. No, it, yes, it, it, the air raid offense is built for a faster paced QB who throws short and immediate balls over the middle. That's an air raid offense. All right, so I guess I guess anything works. I guess anyone <laughs> like like people get like the people think the air raid offense is is just keeping balls it. down the field launching. It. It's not. Air raid offense is you space out speedy receivers, get the ball in space over the middle. And, and go, McC go, go. McCarthy's great at that. So Jack, so Jack wants, <laughs> so, Jack's a commander's fan. He wants McCarthy. I, I look. So if you're like, a commander's wait, fan, I'm taking JJ over D Jaden Daniels. All right, but if you're a commander's fan, you want Drake May, right? That that has to be. I would want Drake. Uh, May. Yeah, I, I yeah. I mean, I I think Drake May is probably a little better than McCarthy. Yeah. 
And like so I'd you, probably you'd go. You would want May too. I'd probably go May Williams and McCarthy. All I'm saying is right now, if I had to put money on it, I'd put my money on Jane Daniels to go too. That's just what I'm saying. Um, part of that reason could be because I'm a Vikings fan, and I am hoping that we get Drake May because just as rumors of JJ McCarthy shooting up the board are starting to come out, you know. It's funny because th- th- throughout this entire draft process, the Vikings have had big time reports coming out that they're interested in McCarthy. They're interested in Jane Daniels earlier this season during the football season. And now Drake May is heating up to the Vikings. Uh, obviously, the Josh McCown hire helped spur those rumors a little bit uh, when they traded. People are thinking that maybe they go up now, trade the two first and maybe next year's first to the Patriots to go up to three. So everyone has their opinions, and that's fair. Um, so Ziggy, what I wanted to ask you is as the fellow Viking fan for now, as the fellow Viking fan, <laughs> I'm, I'm just messing with you. Temporarily. The fellow Viking fan, I have to think that Drake May is the dream scenario for us. For for me, it is. I, I would have signed immediately last year if you told me in March the Vikings will have Drake May next season. You're you're still on board with that, it sounds like from your previous comments. Yeah. So like the thing is, I understand why people are cooling a little bit on Drake May, but so much of this just strikes me as overthinking. He had a worse season this year. There's no question about it. But we're talking about a guy who in his sophomore year throws for 38 touchdowns, seven interceptions, elite arm, elite athleticism, elite size. Like there's just so much to like about this guy as a prospect. And the kinds of things that he's less good at, like some of the footwork and mechanics, are things that are both to some extent fixable. And also, as we've seen from some of the better quarterbacks in the NFL, unconventional mechanics can succeed as long as you can deliver power, right? No one would look at Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes and say those are guys with classic mechanics, Mm -hmm. but they're able to get things done because of their athleticism, their strength, like all the stuff they can do. It's very rare that you can get quarterbacks of all of the talents Drake May has. Now, he's got some inconsistencies. He's got some problems. I understand why people look at him and say he's a riskier prospect. But if you're the Vikings, you're looking for a guy that Kevin O'Connell can coach. You're looking for a guy with really high upside. And you're looking for a guy who fits into the offense. I really think as confident as you can be in a quarterback prospect that Drake May is that guy. Hey, Drake May Drake May has the quarterback build and physique that I just love. That everyone wants right now. He's, he's, he's big. He's tall. He's physical. He can stand in the pocket. And unlike J.J. McCarthy, Drake May is fantastic when it comes to his arm strength outside the numbers teach on the field a guy like that if he can hit his ceiling which i believe is very very high with justin jefferson and jordan addison and aaron jones in the backfield could be a very 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 dangerous offense it's not yeah and it's not only that drake may's ceiling is really high but that's it, Jack. It's that the Vikings, too, are the perfect fit, really, for any young quarterback to go into right now with all the weapons that they have. So if you can take a guy with that talent and put him in an offense with that talent, now now you're not finding yourself in a situation like you, you might find in Washington where you, you know they, they have some good playmakers, but it doesn't compare to the Vikings offense or New England, which would be, I mean, just absolute quarterback hell for a rookie. Um, so I, I think that's another reason for Minnesota If they can get their guy, they have everything necessary for that guy to succeed as soon as you throw him in. Sorry, Z, you look like you wanted to say something. I just want to say, here's honestly what I think about the draft is even though quarterback success isn't totally team determined, there is some evidence. I mean, just putting a guy in a good situation will make him perform better. If you think Caleb Williams is that guy and is the generational prospect, there's a very good chance that the second best quarterback in this draft is just whoever the Vikings take. It, because he'll have the offensive yeah. line, he'll have the receivers, he'll have the coaching. So if I'm one of those quarterbacks in the draft, I'm not. I don't want to go two. I don't want to go three. I am just hoping that I slip and the Vikings trade up and come and get me. I mean, who, what are the situations right now? The quarterback, the, the people looking for a quarterback Washington, are Washington, New England. Washington, New England. The Giants are there. The Broncos are there. The Raiders, to some degree. I, you know, I don't think any of them. And the you know the Raiders have Devontae, but I don't think any of these teams sniff the Vikings. I mean, that's like Caleb Williams going to the Bears. We know that, but and the Bears, then, are, the then, Bears are good too. Like, yeah, the, you know, I mean, they the Bears are. have a, a lot of but, really good players right now. But outside of of uh, Caleb Williams, these other quarterbacks, I don't know how a lot of these guys would fare early on 
in a tough situation like the teams you just mentioned. But Drake may going to the Patriots or the Vikings is career. It could be a career change. It's, a, it's an astronomical difference. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, especially too. You know, we you mentioned it, Ziggy, but Kevin O'Connell's another another guy who's huge. I mean, he's he's viewed as one of the up and coming young coaches in the NFL, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But imagine like a Michael Penix on the Giants versus the Vikings. Yeah, exactly. And may actually speaking about some of those issues. Uh, that Ziggy brought up, like his footwork, you know, after he finished his workout at the North Carolina Pro Day, they were asking him, what's one thing that you've really been focused on? Instant instant answer, you know, trying to work on my footwork, trying to be better there. What's uh, what's something that you need to succeed? He goes, hard coaching. The guy seems like just the perfect guy to, to bring in. And uh, yeah, I, I would love, I think it is the dream scenario for the Vikings and the dream scenario for Drake May for that for that to be the draft selection. And his his biggest con there with the footwork is it is, is such a coachable problem which you can improve on. We saw the same thing with Jordan Love. Yeah. Like when I see bad footwork early on, Jordan Love comes right to my mind. Then he plays a few, oh, he yeah, gets a few reps. Yeah, yeah. We don't get, need, to, we don't need gets, to talk about Jordan Love. He gets a few reps, he's coached, and he's fantastic. I mean, that's a small issue. I wanted to ask you, Ziggy, because you texted during the Drake May Pro Day. You said J.J. McCarthy can't throw left, Drake May can't throw right. Are you just joking around? Or are you are you kind of serious? If you look at their both the pro days and the combine and even just like their throw charts, you'll see that Drake May elite throwing to the left, medium to bad throwing to the right, medium to bad on the level of excellent college football quarterbacks. Yeah. I'm not very worried about that. Some of that was just play design. Yeah. J.J. McCarthy, this is true. If you are looking for the throw he cannot make deep left. His deep balls are actually more or less okay, unless they're going to the left side of the field. If you look at his comeback routes, he can throw an excellent comeback to the right side of the field, terrible comeback to the left side of the field. I actually don't really know. I don't know enough about quarterback evaluation to be able to tell you what explains this, but it is actually worrying that J.J. McCarthy is really only very good throwing to one side of the field, (laughs) at least so far. There, yeah, at least so far. And, um, you know, one other last thing about Drake May that I, I've seen come up a few times, people are talking about being from North Carolina. You had Mitch Trubisky. We're not had doing Sam this. Howell come out. Uh, no, and I just want to say, you know, I think I think it's ridiculous. It, it, I understand that they all went to the same university and that North Carolina, generally speaking, isn't a powerhouse in football. Uh, but just think about, like, I mean, Joe Burrow, Jamarcus Russell, both went to LSU. Like, C.J. Stroud... Uh, you know, Justin Fields, yeah. Ohio State, Caleb Williams and Sam Darnold. No one's no one's getting on Caleb Williams for going to USC because yeah. Sam Darnold went there. There was an NFL but director I'm... of scouting last offseason that said, I'm not taking CJ Stroud because when was the last time an Ohio State quarterback did anything? Yeah. Like yeah. helmet scouting is just ridiculous. You look at the player, you know, people will go back to like the 80s and say, well, their quarterback draft in the 1980s didn't do well. Who cares? Different coaches, different players, different university. Don't do that. You know, to play, you know, to play devil's advocate. Oh, I remember, I remember, I remember last year <laughs> on one of our podcasts talking about the NFL draft. I believe I said this same thing about Alabama QBs, and I wouldn't draft Bryce Young. Yeah, but you, you, yeah, would, you would, you would Jalen. But that's also a silly thing to say about Alabama. I mean, QBs. two is a Jaylen joke artist. Hurts and two are good. Two is a joke artist. Mac Jones stinks. He's a backup now. Bryce Young, we know stinks. Uh, it's regressing. Who else? <laughs> Hurts is falling apart. Who else? Uh, about- to, uh, Jalen Hurts. You, you got Joe Namath. Joe Namath, that's about it. You got Joe Namath. <laughs> what about... Uh, so I get where those guys are coming AJ from. AJ McCarron had a nice career as a backup. Oh, Jalen McCarron, yeah. yeah him. Good career as a backup. Uh, Landry Jones, this. right? No, no, not Landry no, Jones. Uh, is Oak State, right? Who am I thinking of? Who am I thinking of? Uh, Greg McElroy. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, McElroy's a, yeah, he's good on ESPN. I mean, you got some great Bama QBs who... Uh, yeah. made, made for the you booth. Know, and then Jalen Hurts, like he treasured Oklahoma, then he became great. <laughs> uh, the last topic before we get to the mailbag here, you know, we mentioned the Jets. We mentioned how we used to talk about them all the time because Andrew couldn't help himself from spiral spiraling into some sort of Jets uh, tantrum or you know euphoric state. He he was just out of control when it came to the New York Jets. I I have to say I'm I liked having Andrew on the show. I'm glad we did not have when the Jets traded Zach Wilson. No, oh. he would have said unspeakable things. Oh, yeah. The uh, I remember <laughs> the Aaron Rodgers injury. Were we with him that night? No, I don't think we were with him that night. We, he was texting. He texted us right away. <laughs> well, he also we called. Recording. He called a Rodgers injury in week four. 
He, he texted me. to be playful. He texted me. He's like, well, I guess I'm going to be playful. I, I, so I guess I'm four weeks, four weeks early. So the, the Jets, one thing that I want to talk about briefly here is, are, do you guys think they're being overlooked heading into this year? Because last year, with Aaron Rodgers coming in, hard knocks, the hype is, I mean, through the roof. And I will say, when Rodgers ran onto the field with the American flag on 9-11, I think that's one of the coolest football scenes that I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, of course, we were recording during the time, but when I went back and watched the highlight of it, <laughs> the hi- Rodgers Jets highlight tape, it was, I mean, the, the atmosphere in MetLife Stadium was surreal from every all my friends, all of our friends who went to that game. Um, but this year now, when you look at the Jets, I, I haven't heard much of any noise about them. In fact, most people think they're just going to be an, an average to potentially even below average team. Um, so before we get into some, you know, they, they signed... Uh, they just trade for Hassan Reddick. Um, you know they're making, they're finally making some moves. Who who they bring? I'm trying to remember. Um, Tyron Smith. Right? Tyron Smith also came in. They they re-signed Mosley. So, do you guys think that the Jets are being a little bit overlooked heading into this uh, NFL season? I think a matter of it is for sure uh, being a very competitive AFC. I don't view the for Jets. Sure. It, you can't. It, it's tough to rule them out because their roster is pretty solid. I do have a little bit overrated in general, but pretty solid. But you have Aaron Rodgers. I also don't really know. It's hard to think of what Aaron Rodgers is going to be. I mean, his last season in Green Bay missed the playoffs. A team with Jordan Love just took to the to the NFC Divisional round. And then he gets hurt. A pretty bad injury and doesn't play for an entire year. He's well, How old is he? 30? 39. 39. Right? 40 next year? I, I don't think that he takes the Jets to the Super Bowl. I think they can make the playoffs, but like when it, when, you, when you say overlooked, I think it's just justif- proper rating, it's justifiable. Like okay. I don't see them as a Super Bowl team, even with Aaron Rodgers. Gotcha. How about you, Ziggy? It's the Jets are sort of going all in on hoping that they get injury luck, right? Because they brought in Mike Williams and Tyron Smith, both of whom have struggled with injuries in the past and are on the older side. You know, they brought in going all in for next year, guys like Javon Kinlaw ready to play for them. As you talked about, they brought in Hassan Reddick via trade, who's a good player, very good player. But the thing I worry about with this Jets team, you know, you look at the problems last year and the issue that they had, the defense was very, very good. But defensive success is not the sort of thing that easily carries over year over year. But even if it does, the problem, as bad as the quarterback situation was, There were so many problems on that offense. They had no real weapons outside Garrett Wilson. The offensive line was absolutely horrendous. And, you know, we saw what Aaron Rodgers was able to do in Green Bay at the end of his time there. He was still an excellent quarterback, borderline MVP, but he wasn't the kind of guy who you can just put whatever around him and succeed, right? He still needed a decent offensive line. When the weapons weren't there, I mean, you look at his last season in Green Bay when there were younger weapons or guys who weren't ready to produce, he wasn't able to adapt and grow with them. So do I think this Jets team can make the playoffs? Quite possibly. Do I think this Jets team can do very much? I just don't see it. They are all in on the Aaron Rodgers plan, and I just don't see how it's going to go differently this year, even if he stays healthy. I mean, I don't necessarily blame them, though, for going. Like, you, you know, no, you, you, have have you have no, to. No, my point, they absolutely have to, right? He's around for one or two more years, and then it's back to a rebuild. But nothing's going to come up. Look, it. let's Everyone's pretend that they get do fired. get lucky with the injury bug here. You know, Tyron Smith is, is a stud when he's healthy. It's just been yeah. since 2015 is the last time he had a full season. So, I mean, we're talking about almost a decade ago. But Tyron Smith, Mike Williams, absolute stud when healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, Hassan Reddick, I, I, you know, they compared Bryce Huff, who just left, had 10 sacks. Great, great season for a young guy, only 25 years old. Hassan Reddick averages 12 and a half sacks over the past four years. Like Hassan Reddick is a a superstar or a star in the NFL who's often overlooked. I mean, this look at the D line. They Reddick, Quinn and Williams, Jermaine Johnson, Kinlaw, Solomon Thomas, and Will McDonald. I mean, it's six first round picks on that D line. And the secondary is awesome too. I I I actually think you're if they do get the injury luck, like th- th- this team could be really, really good. I mean, it's one of the better defenses in football, at least it should be. And then if you have a healthy Aaron Rodgers who can produce like Aaron Rodgers can produce healthy Wilson, Mike Williams, Williams Brees Hall. I see Garrett, health, I see high healthy Garrett Williams, Brees Hall. Yeah. For me, I just, I don't know. Like my trust level in Aaron Rodgers right now is 50, 50. That's what it comes down. And to. And I think me. that's a fair trust level. Yeah. 
But, but if he's good, like it's all right. Watch if out. If Rodgers is good, it's hard not to say this team can can make some noise. It's just what are the ch- Aaron Rodgers? I know it was just one season, but he looked less good in his last season in Green Bay. Well, that's you what really I'm, want yeah. me to believe that after two years of a ruptured Achilles, he's gonna be that guy? Yeah, and his game does. Mobility is a, a large part of Aaron Rodgers' game. Now, I, I'm not doubting Aaron Rodgers. He can pick you apart in the pocket. We we all know that. But oh, he, Aaron Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Yeah, no, no. He'll, he'll. I mean, he'll be fine if he's told Aaron Rodgers he can't run. He's still still a phenomenal quarterback. I'm not trying to say that. Um, it's just you know, mobility is something that also makes him special when he's able to get out of the pocket. I mean, he, I, I've seen it a gazillion times. I watched him escape and go and make a play downfield. He's unbelievable at it. So how much will that be impacted because of the Achilles? We'll have to find out. The The big fear is that the offensive line just stinks and he's running for his life, getting hurt again. Um, I mean, that Jets offensive line is as important as any unit for any team in the NFL next season. So we'll just have to see how that goes. But the, the talent's there. I mean, there there there's some veterans there, but that is a really good team if uh, if it all pans out. And any closing thoughts on, on the Jets? I mean that that offensive line can be the difference whether they're a Super Bowl team or a team who misses the playoffs. Well, or like a like seven and ten team. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's nuts. Okay, let's let's hop into the mailbag for a little bit here. We'll start with Stuckman. He says, Howdy boys. Stuckman. Love giving questions. Stuckman. Great to see the gang back together. Congrats to Ziggy for coming out and admitting that he is a Packers fan. I'm I'm sure we'll see a lot of these, Ziggy. Yeah, there's gonna be a ton <laughs> of those. That's the whole mailbag, probably. He says to start. Every offseason, there are one or two moves that we look back on with disgust due to it being a mistake uh, or a failure. Which move do you think that will be for this offseason and turn out to be the move that the team regrets? Ziggy, we'll let you take this one because you were very upset with one particular decision. The one through a glass darkly, I could make sense of almost every decision that was made in free agency. The one that stood out to me that I simply could not understand how the team reached what they did was the Calvin Ridley contract. I mean, Calvin Ridley over the next couple of seasons is going to be paid like one of the high best receivers in the NFL. He's going to make as much, actually a little bit more over the next two seasons than AJ Brown. <laughs> and I don't know what we've seen out of Calvin Ridley that makes you think that he is worth paying like one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Now I get it, right? In what was it, 2020, he had a special season, but that was four seasons ago. You know, he had an okay season last year. He did a decent job with the Jaguars, but I didn't see anything that makes me think this is the guy to stake the franchise on. And the Titans are paying Calvin Ridley like he's that guy. The deal it reminds me of, honestly, I will work out better than this almost certainly is the Kenny Galladay deal. And I just struggle to see why they thought Calvin Ridley was worth that. The other deal that I think makes a little bit more sense that I'm on real warning watch with is the uh, Christian Wilkins deal. Mm -hmm. I know that everyone is excited about this. All the Raiders fans are going to come at me, but I really worry that that deal is going to look terrible and he's going to be on the trade block in a season and a half. What's the Robert Ziegler deal? Ziggy uh, we we haven't come to terms yet. I'm playing on the yeah, Ziggy, Ziggy's you're, demanding ma- you're holding, you're holding out contract. <laughs> I, I want I want that Jordan Love contract. Whatever he's about to get in, in a couple of months, that's what I want. I think it's deserved. It, it's gonna it's gonna I, break the bank. I think, yeah, I think it's deserved. <laughs> uh second question from Stuckman. He says, Secondly, what are some things you hope to do with the channel in the near future? There's always the goal of getting big and building a strong community around it, but I wonder what ideas you have in mind specifically. This could include I mean take take notes, guys. Uh, having a guest segment with a fan or two once a month, fan convention or meetup for the Vikings Packers game, making a Discord server like discussed last time, YouTube member hangouts, etc. Uh, you, you know, all of these are great ideas and things that we ha- are trying to figure out right now as we're getting a little bit bigger. Um, Vikings Packers game is something we are trying to make happen. That would be really fun. Yeah, I said I wanted to go to Green Bay and do a show for a bit there. Yeah, we're gonna try and that would be a lot of fun. Some more live shows during the football season uh, as they uh, as we go through that. Um, in terms of bringing on a fan once or two a month, I mean, I've, I've had some ideas going through my head. I think we're also going to start bringing on some other podcasters from other NFC North or football team specific channels uh, and try and integrate with them. But I have some ideas for some good fan interaction um, that hopefully we can get going on soon. From Gamers Haven he, 41, he says, are any of you gamers? And if so, when playing man, do you play as the Packers and intentionally throw the season to make them as bad as you dream they would be? What's really funny about this, guys, is I refuse <laughs> to play. The only the reason I'm addressing this one specifically is I refuse to play as the Packers in Madden. 
I don't think I've ever played as them. And it sucks because I always wanted to be Aaron, play with Aaron Rodgers growing up, but I just couldn't do it. I haven't played Madden in a long time, but my best Madden team, who I was very good with and I loved to play with, was back when uh, the Eagles had LaShawn McCoy. And, uh, oh, I remember Deshaun, you're pretty good. Deshaun Jackson. I love those guys. I haven't played Madden in a bit, though. Not going to lie. Let's see. What else we have here? We have from Elise1715 says, Would you agree that all the NFC North teams will be playoff contenders next season? Um, it's Look, it, it's hard for me to confidently say the Vikings will be a playoff contender next year. I think the Packers and Lions are going to threaten for the Super Bowl and that the Bears are then going to be on that wild card threat line and the Vikings with a good season could get there, but probably not. Yeah, what I would say is every NFC North team has the possibility to be a contender next mm -hmm. year. And I don't like that's not trivial, right? Every, there's most divisions. That's not the case. But it's extremely likely that either the Vikings or the Bears are just not going to be very good. Yeah, you said to see all four. Uh, I, I'd say probably three. I think they're solid teams. But I mean, they're all yeah. solid teams. I think the team who finishes in last place in that division will miss the postseason. Mm. X Pomsky X says, as we look into the possible future to have Ziggy as a bachelor contestant, do we really believe he can compete with Jack in that Steelers glow or that purple hue <laughs> or that purple hue of Paul? He goes, only way I can see Ziggy truly having an edge of being the next American sex symbol is by wearing a cheese hat and a Jordan Love style suit and tie. My God, whoever looks at him would be under a spell of pure, utter, quote, love. I mean, I gotta, comes up with this stuff, man? I got a half shove thinking about that. <laughs> he goes, guys, I don't know if the world is ready for the, the jiggy, ziggy, slow-mo walk. So my question is, will we see a short trailer of this show, if possible? Or are you guys going to keep playing with the field? Ziggy, are you going to be making a Bachelor trailer at any point? Absolutely not. <laughs> what if, what that if, is, if, if we hit 100K, I'll think about it. Oh, there it. you have it, and there it is. Uh, here's we're touching the way there. Uh, Handyman says, y'all were so glad to get Aaron Jones from the Packers. What do you think of the Packers signing Greg Joseph? Um, Greg Joseph is a, a good kicker who every once in a while just will really disappoint you and miss an extra point. <laughs> Greg Joseph missed a lot of extra points. That was disappointing. I felt that he made the majority of his clutch kicks up until last season. Um, I mean, the, the year that we were 14 and three or 13 and four, he made numerous clutch field goals. Um, it was just the inconsistency with the the gimmies that you need to have. I know no Packer fan wants to hear this after last year, but that that's what ultimately did him in in Minnesota, I believe. But I don't think he's a bad kicker. And any any thoughts on Greg Joseph Ziggy as someone who I'll say Kevin Cole, his research has more or less convinced me on this. Um, it is there are very, very few kickers in the NFL whose performance is consistent year over year. Like they're just, it's almost random. Once you have a kicker who's good enough to make it in the NFL, it's almost random who's going to have a good year and who isn't. Mm -hmm. Could Greg Joseph have a good year? Sure. Am I distraught about losing him? No. He's no, uh, you know, he's not Butker. He's not. So I'm not worried about it. Dan, Dan Stoyer says, I think he corrected us and said it's not. Yeah, no, it's Paul. I know you can't read German. That's obviously I, I, Stoyer. All right, all right. I, oh, that was like S -E -E. I can't what, what, what did Paul say? I can't read Stuya? I said Stuart. 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 I can't read yeah, German. That's obviously Stuart. -E 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 that... e oh, I'm sorry. I, I, Dan, I, Dan, I profusely gravy. apologize for the mispronunciation. But no, Ziggy, of course I don't speak. I, I, why would I speak German just random? You don't have to be able to speak German. You just have to know how to pronounce a couple vowel combinations. He says, hey, guys, love the content. Last name is pronounced Stoyer. Any interest in the UFL? Seems to me it was a pretty good first weekend, which included a kicker making a 64-yard field goal who hasn't kicked since high school and punter Brad Wing throwing a touchdown pass as well as destroy. Uh, oh, yeah, destroying, destroying. Yeah, yeah, uh, that. NFL videos, which was pretty cool. Um, I, I'm Look, here's one thing that maybe people will get upset with me for. I really, really, really don't care about any other professional football league than the NFL. I think they're all basically doomed to fail at some point. So I'm cool. You know, our good friend, Will Coots really gets into these things and would try to get me and Ziggy to, to root for teams with him. It was like, what, what were they called? The fleet or something like the San Diego fleet, something like, yeah, that. there was, there have um, been so many. And I'm like, I'm not going to get into it. Cause the league will be gone in like this season. So I, I'm personally not that interested in them, but look, I think it's awesome when people, the more people get into this stuff, it's like, it's, yeah, it's great. Who, I, who doesn't want more football? I have a uh, absolutely no interest in the UFL. <laughs> Um, but look, as, as the summer rolls around, and I've said this before, I'm a, I'm a baseball guy. So that's what I throw on the TV nowadays. Yeah. Uh, so no, like I like my football in, in the fall and the winter. 
I, I, I don't. It's the NFL for me. Case Cookus. I, I, I watched some of the uh, Memphis showboats to see what Case Cookus could do. Ziggy's Case the guy who would, who would, on this show, who would, who would enjoy you. I mean, look, there's Ziggy always Cook. one or two of these guys who breaks through and puts a run to join the NFL and is okay. It won't be Case Cookus. I wish it were. Great name, Case Cookus. Uh, I did see Brad Wing's touchdown, though. Second question from Dan was fun, fun question. Favorite fast food place would be, it's not even close. Chick fil A by a mile. I think I'm also Chick fil A. I, I, I love, I love Raisin Cane. Y'all were an off. Y'all were an off. You pick the two fast food places with the worst chicken. Oh yes. Yeah. What? Whatever. What did what did you say again? Culver's is that what you like? Culver's is great. What what did you? I, I don't really eat fast food anymore because there's not a whole lot for me. But uh, boy, you can't go Chick Fil A and Raisin Canes. Boy, what what would you pick? I'm I'm not sure. I've got a pick. I don't know. I eat Chick Fil A. Whatever, whatever's got something I can eat. I will tell you, McDonald's is just always the classic one though. Best French fries are probably McDonald's still. Um, from Jeremy, Jeremy JB4345. Historically speaking, what former Vikings players or players do you feel have not gotten the recognition, local or national, that they have deserved? Hmm. A lo- a Greg Jennings player. God, the Greg Jennings experiment. If I think of someone recently who hasn't really gotten a ton of love for the Vikings. Um you know, I mean, way back in the day, this this is going way back now, um, or at least in, in my time as a Viking fan. I thought EJ Henderson was an absolute beast. In all time, Antoine Winfield's a phenomenal corner cornerback who not a lot of people like a lot of those Vikings defenders, Kevin Williams, like absolute freaks, uh, who just weren't, you know, talked about a ton uh, at the time. Can you think of anyone sitting at the top of your head that you uh I got a guy? I got Jack. Who you got, Jack? Who you got? I got a uh, Chester Taylor. I love Justin Taylor. He was pretty bear. He was he was a bear well, for a long time too. That dude was pretty good, and, and he, he just backed up AP, so he didn't really get to show what he had. Chester was great. I thought he was a good running back whenever he got the chance. No, Ch- just, Chester was awesome. Would you count Kevin Williams? Uh, yeah, I just said Kevin Williams. Yeah, I, but I know. Well, I, I was just thinking because that's the guy who I would probably pick. But I don't know. Is he underrated? Do I think so? I mean, he, he's he, he might end up in the Hall of Fame, but still, like, no. If you talk about best defensive tackles. I bet most people who aren't Vikings fans will have no idea. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people know he got what five first team all pros in six years. Yeah, I mean, especially people from the especially younger people right now will have no idea who Kevin Williams is. And he was out an absolute stud for a long time. That that's a fun question there. Um, okay. Dynasty seven oh one, hypothetically and fantastically speaking, if Aaron Rodgers is done with the Jets after next year, still wants to play and is good at football with the Vikings one. I mean, we won't because we're going to draft a quarterback. Um, however, I will say like, I'd love the storyline of just Rodgers coming to the Vikings. That, that would be fun for me. Ziggy would want nothing to do with that. No, I'm, I'm tired of, uh, I'm tired of taking the Packers players. We got like to do 41. <laughs> just a few more here. Uh, Jeremy's second question is what should the Vikings do? What do you want them to do on day two and three of the draft? Are there any positions in particular you want them to focus on? Um, honestly, with Brian Flores and the way the team is set right now, I just want them to go out and get defensive playmakers, get f- fast guys who are going to fly to the ball, you know, guys who make plays on the ball. I, I just want animals on defense. That That's really just what I want to see. Um, anyone in particular for you, Ziggy, as a fellow Viking guy? I've got to do a little bit more diving on the later defensive players, but I will just say, this is such a deep receiver draft. I know this may not necessarily be what people are thinking, but there is so much talent at that position in this draft. If a guy falls, you know, we trade down a little bit. We have the picks. I'm never opposed to adding another wide receiver. We saw what three really good wide receivers could do in Cincinnati. I honestly, I'm fine going more offense if that's what we need. I know the defense needs work. We'll have to get guys eventually. But if this is the year for wide receivers, sign me up. <laughs> we we do need another one with KJ gone. Uh, yeah, I mean you, you need three good wide receivers in the NFL these days. That's just how it is. Our boy XX McLovin XX says, How's everything been, guys? Feel as though the NFL has settled down, so let's get started. Jack, we'll we'll go to you on this one only because Ziggy and I talked about it. Uh do you like the kickoff rule change? Oh, that's what you you return to the third or uh to the 30 now, right? Uh, they're kicking from I think the 35 and, and they can't it, and they can't run until yeah, they start on the 40. On the opposing forty, and but can't run until can't run until it's, it's caught. It's caught, yeah. 
I'm not a huge I fan of that. I, care, right? I mean, I, I don't really care. I'd say I'm not the biggest fan of that now. Uh, question two, he says, got to insert a Packers question. Have you been watching all the podcasts and media Jordan Love has gone on and the confidence he's shown? Um, what a change from the Rodgers era. What are your thoughts? It's funny you bring that up, uh, McLovin, because yeah, I love just casually being like, yeah, it's funny you brought that up, <laughs> McLovin. Can I see your fake ID, McLovin? Um, because I was just thinking that yesterday. I saw another Jordan Love interview. I was like, this guy's really going on like a world tour right now. Um, yeah, compared to the Rogers era where it was just, I mean, look, I have a lot of friends. We have a lot of friends who are Packers fans and they were just sick and tired of it. Every time you talked about Aaron Rodgers, you had an MVP quarterback who the fan base was saying like, all right, I can't wait to get rid of this guy, which is kind of insane. Um, so I think for Packers fans, it's probably a huge breath of fresh air. And like you said, you know, we get yelled at every once in a while for, for this, but I, I think he's saying everything you want to hear. As a fan, I, I'd be I'm, really, I've been really impressed. But I am glad to see Jordan Love spending time with the media and not working out with Drew Brees like he was the yeah, start right. of the offseason. <laughs> no, I, th I think he's on track. Um, I seriously think he's on track to being a, having an absolutely fantastic MVP type of season if uh, if things go the right way in Green Bay. That confidence should be there by all means. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah. Lastly, number three, what tone are you guys... Looking to create for your show coming into the draft slash season. Any future plans for the channel? Um, kind of as we've said before, we just like having a, uh, you know, a, 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 uh, a channel that's very inviting and where everyone's leaving comments and kind of goofing around. Um, it's fun to just hang out with everyone, really. That's all we're looking for, I'd say. You know, the more... Uh, yeah, I was just, I was just making, <laughs> making sure you guys didn't want to add in. No, but there's there, there, I think, keep an eye out for draft night. There might be something fun happening. Yeah, hey, just the more the more engagement. I mean, I love reading all the comments on a daily basis, and like the more engagement that we get, the more excited I get to go and do a show. I feel like I'm we're talking and hanging out with our audience while we're mm -hmm. doing these shows. That's that's what I love about all the uh, the recent engagement we've been getting. I think we got two more that we'll touch on here. Um, Matt Nell's a two hundred three says, "How much do the ch does the Chiefs draft strategy or free agency strategy change with the Rasheed Rice situation? And if the 49ers can't come to terms with Ayuk?" Do we see a possible trade between the two teams? Um, I mean, we have to see how the Rasheed Rice situation plays out first, uh, which just sounds like a horrible situation overall. Um, but I do think that the Chiefs, what they have Hollywood, right? So they have Hollywood Brown now. I, yeah, still, they're not they're not trading for Ayuk. Yeah. They're not ready to hand Brandon Ayuk a giant contract. Yeah, I would be surprised on Ayuk, but you you'll definitely see Kansas City go after a receiver um, in the draft. We'll we'll see what happens to Rice, but I'd be surprised. Regardless, they're gonna want one. They, yeah, they need, need as many playmakers as they can get. And from Spencer Geller, he says, "Hey boys, first time giving mailbag questions, but I've been supporting the show for a while now. Appreciate Thank you. that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much." Uh, who do you guys have winning March Madness and why? Well, we did a show. I have UConn. Uh, well, I mean, I was rooting for Auburn because I picked them in a big pool, but I think UConn's just too good. And so, uh, well, I had Iowa State. I got bounced by Illinois, but when it comes to the final four, I'm actually going to take uh, Alabama. Really? Uh, that's absurd. Ziggy, <laughs> this UConn team just Purdue. looks unbeatable. I, think, I, I think they beat Bama, but I honestly, I don't think their double digit win streak is getting broken for the rest of the season. Oh, I don't. I mean, 30, 30, nothing. I, I'm excited to see if, if ED gets to the finals. I still think they'll blow them out, but Purdue, I'm thinking Purdue, Purdue could, could give them a game I mean, of the teams left. Purdue could give Purdue is going to win it. And then I'll declare after you as national champs. Uh, second question. The Arizona Cardinals have proven themselves to be such a god awful football team for so long. I have to imagine they're the worst team in the NFL. They can the play is consistently unremarkable. Ownership is exceptionally bad. And I haven't met someone who has admitted to being a fan of theirs in years. Do you guys agree? And do you think the Cardinals could win a Super Bowl one day? That's I actually don't think it's that. I don't think it's as bad as you're making it sound. That's actually really yeah. funny because I've also never met a Cardinals fan. And like I'll like I'll watch their home games. And it'll be like the opposing fans who take over the stadium. So like, I don't even know if they do exist. Uh, I thought in like what Super Bowl just one day. Yeah, I'd probably say so. I mean, they, they were yeah, horrible when Kyler. Came like they, they, they were nine and zero like not long ago. Well, and then Kyler got hurt, right? Yeah. It's, it's like, go ahead. You look like you're. No, I mean, I, I look. I is this team in the best position they could possibly be right now? No, but Monty Austin Fort has stepped in and brought competence. It seems ideally like ownership is backing out just a little bit. I'm excited from what we saw from Gannon in year one. 
Like there's reason to be optimistic. You know, winning a I Super so Bowl too. is tough. A lot of franchises never get it done. I can't say for sure that the Cardinals will or won't. But if you look at this team, how they've been operating, how they've been performing, I think there's a lot of reason to think things are going to look up. And yeah, I mean, you're in the NFC right now. There'll be a few years where you can be competitive. They could easily make the playoffs next year. I think they're the second best team in their division. So there's a lot to look forward to, I think. They need a, I, don't, I don't know they, if they're better than the Rams. They need Kurt Warner and Larry Fitz to come out of retirement. <laughs> uh, lastly, he says, I mean, Ziggy, your, your meteoric rise in the YouTube world. Bad. Ziggy surprised us one episode and gave a breakdown on whether or not Italy could slash should be broken down into several regions, regional states. I remember that. And then casually added that nobody asked him about the things he's actually knowledgeable about. Can Ziggy come out and explain what he's studying so we can bother him with more questions? This is a dangerous, a dangerous oh, path we're going down, Spencer. My headphones might come off for this. All I'm saying is just I'm a philosophy PhD student. I'm a philosopher. I do philosophy. Uh, if anybody is at the University of Virginia or knows someone at the University of Virginia, I need people to enroll in my summer class. I'm teaching a class on uh, the possibility and desirability of immortality. You know, the actual work I do is like 17th century philosophy of physics so that stuff's neat but no one ever wants to ask me about that i'll take any and all philosophy questions though in any mailbag the next mailbag is going to be philosophy Ziggy. time with Ziggy. does this straw have one hole or two uh what do you take that's a question for mathematicians not me that's not but a philosophy i think the answer question. is zero holes oh that's just that that's just false it has at it's least just one. correct i mean does a hole there, well, so first of all, there aren't such things as holes. And this is really obvious if you sit and reflect on like what a hole is for a moment. Is cereal a soup? What is the word? Uh, see, the, these these are the questions that like people soup, think right? I think about. And it's those are totally but uninteresting. Why? It's a verbal dispute. I this is this is just soup. about the definition of the term soup. This is totally uninteresting. <laughs> Food in a bowl you can eat. <laughs> the uh, well, all right. All and right. then yeah, it's a soup. The sure. last, the cool. last nice one from, uh, is from our friend Cusick, who says, finally saw one of these, hopefully John not too late. Um, he says, if Caleb Williams goes on to throw for 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, and finds a way to beat the Packers, where does he rank as an all-time Chicago quarterback? Number one, Cusick, number one. <laughs> if Caleb you know, Williams has a single, like, legitimate all-pro season, he is the best quarterback in Bears history. No, no, we got to forget about Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler was good. Jay Cutler was fine. Jay Cutler was fine. Yeah, his moments. Like, I thought like, don't bitter... get me wrong. I'm not saying the guy's terrible, but he was. I mean, he's the best quarterback from Santa Claus, sure. But like, the dude made one Pro Bowl with the Broncos, and then was okay with the Bears for a while, and he's in the running. This is how low the standards are. <laughs> well, that'll wrap up this mailbag. It's funny, you know. Before we started, so he was like, "All right, you got like, <laughs> you got your questions highlighted." It's like, "Yeah, I'll just go through them. <laughs> like, maybe pick like five to eight of them. We run through." Almost all of them. If we didn't get to your question, they were good sorry. questions this week. Oh no, they were great, great questions. And I'm sorry if we didn't get to to your question. We, you know, we had a, a lot of them on the the list here, um, and we'll try and get to them in the comments section. So just keep leaving comments. We try to get to these as, as often as we can. Um, so thanks everyone who is listening. Hopefully we're back on the Thursday show with Zach. Um, do you guys have any, anything you wanted to end this episode with, Ziggy? Perhaps a bachelor appearance. I'm just saying. I got to say this one more time because I'm worried that people haven't been listening. I am not a Green Bay Packers fan. <laughs> I was not a Green Bay Packers fan. I never will be a Green Bay Packers fan. It's just a prank, that bro. is all. My, my closing uh, statement here, I want all of our fans to know that your pal Jack made a wager five days ago on oh, opening geez. day, 100 bucks to win 20 grand that the Pirates win the World Series, and they're currently 5-0. and oh. So uh, I need you guys to all root along with me throughout the summer months. The team of the show, the Pirates. Well, also, I mean, you know, we all love. Wait, aren't I'm assuming a lot of our listeners are Brewers fans? They probably, oh, they probably they, they probably all are Brewers fans. Probably, yeah, I hate the Packers. Well, you, at can't, least, you can't hate the Pirates. You know, I, you know, a lovable team that I root for is the uh, the New York Yankees. Yeah, also, yeah. also undefeated. Maybe not of this podcast release, but undefeated at least. It's open four now. Um, all right, that'll wrap it up. We'll see you on Thursday. Thanks for listening.